Right. Hello, everyone. So today we are looking at lead code number three, longest substring without repeating characters. Uh, this is a very popular question that's asked at, at a lot of companies. You can see here in the last six to eight months, very frequent at Bloomberg, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, all around. So I highly suggest that if you're not familiar with this problem and the patterns that it uses to take some time to definitely familiarize yourself because it's a good probability that you might see it out in the jungle. Um, okay, so here we have our prompt here. Given a string S, find the length of the longest substring without repeating characters. So here we have a string ABC, ABC, BB. The output is three because the longest substring without a repeating character is ABC. However, example two, we have uh, just a substring or a string with all repeating characters, so the longest substring is is one. Uh, example three, we have PWW, KEW, so our longest substring is going to be three. Again, it can be KEW or WKE. All right, moving on, we can also have an empty sub uh, string, and with an empty string, our output would be zero. Okay, so let's let's take a look at let's take a look at a brute force way to approach this problem, and then let's look at a more efficient way, which is using a pattern called sliding window. And it's definitely a pattern that you want to be very familiar with because you're going to see the sliding window approach uh, can solve a lot of problems uh, anytime you're dealing with strings, contiguous strings, substrings. It's a great way to to solve those types of problems. So let's let's look at both approaches. So here we have a string ABC, ABC, BB. So let's jump over here. Okay, so we have a string uh, ABC, ABC, BB. Okay, and we want to get the longest substring, which is going longest substring without repeating characters. So what would be a brute forced way to do this? Well, what we could do is we could find every single substring in this input string, and then we could go in and hash every single one of those substrings and count the frequency. If the frequency of the characters is greater than one, then we do not accept that string, and we want to find the longest substrings where all the frequency count of the characters are uh, one. So let, let's let's take a look here. So what if we found all the the substrings? So we're going to have a a b a b c a b a let's see a b c a a b c a here we're going to have uh, a b c a b and so forth and so on. Okay. So we're going to get a lot of substrings with this. And then what we can do, brute force, is we can go ahead and hash this A so we can have an A and a frequency of 1. So that could be a potential uh, substring. We could have uh, hash this so we could have A, B, and count the frequency there. We can count the frequency of this substring. This will be A1, B1, C1. And then here, this substring, you can see that A is going to equal 2, B is going to equal 1, C is going to equal 1. So this will not be a potential candidate. Neither will this because we have a repeating character there and a repeating character for B as well. And so what would our, what would our time and space complexity be for this? Well, to get every single substring brute force, it would be um, O of n squared would be our time for getting all the substrings. Then we would have to run a linear operation on every single one of those substrings. So our total time complexity would actually be O of n to the third. And what would be our space complexity? Well, to get every single substring, we're going to have to have O of n squared space plus we're going to have to also have o of n spare, one more o of n square space to hash every single one of those substrings. So it's going to be o of n squared plus o of n squared. 
So our total space, our approximate, will be O of n squared space. So we have O of n cubed time and O of n squared space, which is not good, which is not great. Right? So could we do better? OK, let's take a look at the sliding window approach. How do we approach that? Let's clear this. A, B, C, A, B, C, B, B. OK, so here we have the string. A, B, C, A, B, C, B, B. What I'm going to do is actually just make it a little bit bigger. A, B, C, A, B, C, B, B. OK, now with the sliding window approach, we want to have two pointers. We want to have um, a window start and a window end. And I'm going to just keep these variables here just so we can keep track of everything. Here will be our window start. Here will be our window end. We're going to have a running max. Okay, and we can initialize that to zero because we can have an empty string as an input. And if we do have an empty string, then we want to return zero. So our max is, is we can initialize that as zero. We want to have um, an ith index or where we are iterating. Start and end, will, I'll just keep track of the values, and I, I will be keeping track of really end, but at the index. And then we want a variable so far. I'm going to actually put it up here. OK. And so if we have so, so when we have so far, what do we want to use? What data structure do we want to use? Well, I think using an object would be a great way because we can keep track of the frequencies using an object. And then if the frequency ever gets above one, then what we want to do is remove, we want to um, decrement start and increment the, the start position. Okay, this will make a little more sense as we step through this. All right, so let's say we are at index zero. S start is going to equal A. The character at E end is going to also equal A. And our max now is going to be one. Okay, and what are we gonna have here at so far? Well, so far we're gonna have A with the frequency of one. Now, do we have do we do we do we have anything that is greater than than uh, one in terms of do we have a repeating character? Because we want to get the longest substring without a repeating character. So we want to create a window that moves forward or contracts, depending on making sure that every time in, inside of that window we have a substring that does not have any repeating characters. So our so far is good. We can go ahead and increment our end. Okay, and now what are we going to do? We're going to be at index one. A is uh, S's start is still going to equal A. End is going to equal B. And we can add this B here to equal one. And we can we can say that okay. Uh, we are still in a substring that's valid in our so far. Okay, so we can now increment max to two. Okay, let's keep moving. End equals uh, C. So now we have C, that equals one. Again, we're still good. We have a substring here that is valid. There's no repeating characters in it. Okay, so we can uh, increment this to two. It'll still equal A, this will equal C. And we can increment our max to three. Now, what happens here? We get to A, okay, and so this is gonna equal two. And now this is not valid. Right, we, we do not have a valid, a valid substring here. So what do we want to do? Well, what we want to do is we want to move our window at start position here, our window here at start position, and we want to decrement this A out of our so far and see if we're still valid. Okay, so let's say we are at S here and we decrement this A back to one and move this start over there. Okay, so now we're valid. Now everything is still valid. Okay, so I is gonna equal uh, three. Start is now gonna be at B. 
end is going to be at A, and the max is still going to be 3, right? Let's keep moving. You can see that this pattern starts making more sense here. End is B. B then increments to 2. This doesn't work. We move start over. We decrement B out of our so far, and now it's valid. And we can move forward. We can update max. And we can keep on going all the way to the end until we reach the end. And we can, we can then deduce what is our max, and that's going to be our answer. OK? So what is our time and space complexity using this method? Well, our time complexity, how many times are we hitting each one of these, these variables, right? So our time complexity here is going to be O of n squared, right? Because we can contract and expand. So worst case, we, would we could go through everything twice. And what would be our space complexity? Well, we, our space complexity is going to be our so far here. That's going to be the worst case. So it, at worst case, we could have every element in our so far. The whole string is, there are no repeating elements in the entire string. Then um, our space could be at worst case O of n. So this is much better than the brute force approach, which was O of n to the third and O of n squared space. Here we brought it down to O of n squared for time and O of n for space. OK, so let's go ahead and move over to the code. All right. And so what do we want to do here? First, what we want to do is we want to create a max variable. So we can say let max equals 0. We want to have a start for our window. So let window start. And we're going to set that to 0. We want a hash. So we can do const so far. And we'll set that to uh, an object. Okay, And then we want to iterate over our string. So for let window end, we'll set that to 0 when window end is less than s dot length, window end plus plus. OK, so here we're substituting i and the end as the same, same variable. OK, this is just going to be the window end is this right here, and that's what's incrementing, moving to the, to the right. All right, so here we have window n. And now, what's the first thing we want to do? We want to update our so far. So we can just put this in a variable. We can just say let write char, which is going to equal s of window end. All right, and then we want to update our so far um, variable. So, so far at write char. Now this is going to equal if there is nothing in the if there is already something in the right chart, we just want to add one to it. Okay, so we can do so far right char. If that's true, we're going to add one to it, or we're going to set it to one. Okay, all this is doing is it's checking: do we have something in so far? If this is true, then what we want to do is go ahead and use this expression right here, which is going to take the current value and add one to it. If this is false, if this is undefined, then we're not going to use this expression. We're going to set it to just 1. And that's what this will equal right there. So that's all that one line of code is doing. All right, now what we want to do is we want to decrement. We want to check if that's so far, if the value is greater than 1. So while so far at right char is greater than 1, what do we want to do? We want to decrement from the left. We want to go ahead and take whatever's at the start position, decrement it from so far, and then move window uh, start over one. So let's go ahead and get our uh, left char. And that is going to be uh, s of um, window start. All right. And now what do we want to do? We want to check. What is the value at uh, our left char? 
Okay, so if it is greater than one, we want to decrement it. If it is one, we want to delete it. All right, so we want to say if um, so far at left char is greater than one, then we want to just go ahead and decrement this. We want to do so far at left char minus minus, else we want to delete. Delete so far left char. Because if it's if it's at one, then that means it's going to be at zero and we want to just delete that element out of out of our, our hash. And then we want to increment our window start. Plus plus. And then what do we want to do? We want to update our max. So max is going to equal, we can do a math dot max of whatever is current, whatever our current max is, and window end minus window start. And we're going to add one here because you can see that the prompt wants the length. The prompt is asking for the length, not the indices. So when we're looking at EK, WKE, we want the length, which is three. And that's why we're going to add one here, because the indices will, will give us one less than the length. And then all we want to do is just go ahead and return max. OK, we can run that. And that is looking good. So that is leak code number three, longest substring without repeating characters. It's using a very classic pattern, which is the sliding window pattern. And you can see that this is a question can, that can be solved very quickly if you understand the sliding window pattern. And you see how frequently it's asked. And so if you ever run into this problem out in the wild and you know the sliding window pattern, you can literally solve this in just within a few minutes. And there's so many other problems that are basically just variations of this same pattern. So uh, I can see why it's asked because um, if someone can solve this quickly, it does let the interviewer know that they are prepared, like they did go through the preparation process. And that's a lot of times what they're looking for at these interviews. Anyway, that is lead code number three. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you on the next one.